Okay. All right. So, Hi, everybody. My name is Fred Dixon. I'm the product manager for Big Blue Button. Uh, this is an update community presentation. We do these every two weeks. Uh, this week is a little bit special for us. Um, so we've actually been together for a whole week uh, here in Seneca College in Toronto, Ontario for the uh, Developer Summit. So we've got a couple of uh, picks. This is the one we did in the earlier first day. I oh, have this huge room. Um, there's about 18 developers that have been working together for the last week to advance the Big Blue Button project. I'm going to share with you the work that we've been doing on the core to advance it. There'll be another presentation starting at 12 o'clock uh, that'll talk about the uh, work in the HTML5 client. So here's another picture, uh, sort of a close up. You can see us all together. It's been really good uh, for the whole week. Lots of great progress. So the, there's basically three companies that have gotten together. And a lot of these companies have been with us uh, very early on from the beginning. Mconf, uh, they're based in Brazil. They have been huge contributors to the Big Blue Button project. They have their own distribution of Big Blue Button, uh, Mconf, and they've done a mobile client as well in the past. So very glad to have them up. IMDT uh, with Tiago and his team. Tiago has worked early on in Red 5 and has been involved in the Big Blue Button project also for the last five or six years. And Blindside Networks, where I work at, uh, this was the company that started the Big Blue Button project back in 2009, and we continue to heavily invest uh, all of our resources into improving the open source project for the benefit of everybody. And all of these are commercial companies. We earn money both through providing support, services, uh, hosting. So if you need help, uh, you can always reach out to any one of these, and obviously you'll see us all in the forums as well. Okay, so the three things that we've been, two things that we've been working on really is the Big Blue Button uh, 2.0, uh, which we're looking to get to a beta, and the HTML5 client. My talk will be mostly on the 2.0 side, and what we'll do is that I'll leave it to the next group of folks who are gonna present uh, at 12 o'clock, talking about the HTML5 client. So the release 2.0, we have worked on release 1.1 probably six months after we released beta. And then we released our release candidate and our final release. Since then, we have been focused almost 100% on 2.0. And 2.0, uh, you can see the number of issues that we've closed. There's 14 that are open. Uh, in the recent things that are left, uh, working on just making sure there's a bug with the late joiners, uh, update existing recording thumbnail links. These are two small things we hope to fix very soon. Under the hood, we updated the latest version of Red 5, uh, latest version of Corento, and we're just working on testing. I've covered in other videos kind of what's in 2.0. There's a couple blog posts in it as well. Uh, didn't think I would go through it here. You'll see an announcement to the Big Blue Button developer list. Uh, that there will be a new packages updated probably early next week. And uh, we will be updating our test servers as well. So later today, we'll update test.bigbluebutton.org so you can try some of the new stuff that we've been talking about. And again, we always look forward to your feedback. So one of the things we've been working on is WebRTC desktop sharing. So you know that we've been using Java for last five, six years for desktop sharing. And the Java applet's gotten really good over the years. Essentially, it wraps FFmpeg inside of an applet, runs binary on the user's desktop, and sends an RTMP stream to the server. However, the browsers have also gotten pretty good, and they provide uh, support for WebRTC desktop sharing. So we've been working on it this week. Uh, this is in parallel to uh, some of the video work that's been going on with the HTML5 client. What this means is that when in the Flash client, if you're on Firefox or Chrome, and you choose desktop sharing, excuse me, you'll have you'll have an option to choose WebRTC. And this is not how the final UI will look. These are placeholder UIs, but the idea is that the existing way to share desktop sharing, the Java applet, will still be there. So it's still great if your ports are blocked for WebRTC, but you'll also have, your presenter will have the ability to do WebRTC. And if they do that, the uh, browser, if you're on Chrome, it'll ask you to install an extension and we'll post the links to the, basically it's a, a Chrome plugin that, if you uh, want to allow your users to do desktop sharing on Chrome, you have to put the uh, server host name for your server in it and publish an extension to the Chrome store. And then in the config XML for Big Blue Button, you invite use, you give it the link to the URL and the key so that when a user uh, tries to do desktop sharing, if the browser, if, if, if Big Blue Button client doesn't have the desktop sharing extension installed for Chrome, uh, it can prompt the user to download and install it. That extension is really just telling Chrome, 
the user has given permission for doing desktop sharing with this list of host names. So when you do it, uh, you only have to install it once. There's no binary in it. It's just about 30 or 50 lines of JavaScript code. But when you do it in Chrome, you'll get a dialog box that comes up that lets you share an application, or you can share your entire screen. Pretty straightforward. If you do it in Firefox, Firefox is kind of nice because it doesn't actually require an extension. Uh, Firefox will give you its own menu where you can share, um, you can choose to share the entire screen and you pick which screen you want. This is the browsers doing it through WebRTC. Once you share the screen, the viewers will see it appear inside the desktop sharing window, same as before. And the inst instructor will see the, um, will see the screen sharing appear here in the screen sharing preview. So the end result is the same, it's just a different path and we'll be, um, we'll be able to do it. Okay, so in terms of desktop sharing, no need to run the external Java applet. Uh, be enabling it in Firefox and Chrome. This will be behind a flag. So probably by default, it won't be turned on, but it can be turned on so you have it enabled in Firefox and Chrome. In the back end, we're using Corento, received WebRTC screen sharing from the client, and we're just working on optimization of the quality of the screen sharing. This is going to be the same screen sharing that happens in the HTML5 client. We're just enabling it inside the Flash client because at the end of the day, it's just like we did with WebRTC audio. In the Flash client, when you choose the audio, you're actually doing WebRTC audio first and then falling back to Flash if it can't make the connection. We're going to do the same thing with screen sharing. You will choose, uh, you'll have the user, the circle of the option, they can choose WebRTC uh, screen sharing. And if not, they can try the, the Java based screen sharing. Um, any questions on the screen sharing? And again, you'll be able to try this out uh, hopefully later today or early next week on test.bigwebutton.org. And I'm going to pause the recording for a second. Hey, guys. So uh, the next thing we want to talk about is the API. So I'm going to turn it over to Jesus Rodrigo and Leonardo Draco. And then we'll, they can talk about the work that we've been doing to look at improving the API. This is more for future versions of the product, but things that I think you'll benefit from as a developer. All right, then. Thank you for coming. My name is Jesus Rodrigo. I'm here with, uh, well, we cannot see us, but I'm here with Leonardo as well. Uh, another area we have been working on this week is uh, the API. Well, the, the API for us is here. All right. So why are we writing a new API? Well, the first goal, the first thing you have in mind, is we want to gain adoption through community development. We have been seeing a number of integrations coming uh, over the years, a uh, number of LMSs, learning management systems, and content management system has been adopting the UCB Blue Button for the conferences. And uh, the developers are using what we have. And uh, we, something that is uh, mostly consistent is that there are some failures in the integrations when they first come to be robot. So we want to fix that. We want to make this uh, uh, immersion into be robot from the external world uh, like easier uh, for, for developers. We want to we want an API that is consistent. We want to follow modern standards and best practices. So this is why we're doing this. A little bit of history about the uh, the project or this uh, area of the project is uh, well, right now we have an API that is uh, uh, well REST like uh, has been in use for uh, ten years and now this is the was well, the very first and as I say there are a number of integrations we started the project like in January 2014 with a number of uh, inter uh, iterations. Uh, we started doing like a, a REST, a real REST uh, uh, API. Uh, we, start, we started exploring uh, um, the authorization based on OAuth, OAuth2, and, and some other, some other uh, things. But uh, we ended, uh, you know, working until, oh. in this uh, new design that uh, Leonardo, you want to get into the details? Yeah, sure. So in this new API, we have um, following those ideas that Jesus presented earlier, the wise, we are doing it. 
we came up with this new design. It's not the first iteration. It's uh, maybe like the fourth or fifth iteration. We tried several things before. And I think we finally got to a point where we have something that is not hard to implement and we can reach the goals we want with the new API. So it's something simple, but at the same time, it will improve the API. So, uh, the decisions we made, we are gonna have a REST API. So it's something that is used by a lot of applications. We're gonna use microservices. This is another thing that lines up with the ideas we have for the entire project. It's gonna be more directed to microservices in the future. Uh, we have delegated responsibilities, so it's not just one big component doing all the API. We have several components. We're going to use Golang. It's another language you are, we are introducing in the project, and we think it fits very well with the, the API. We Right now, we have prototypes for all the components. I'm going to show an, an image uh, later uh, with them. And the idea is not to make something that will replace entirely the old API. It will with time, but initially it's going to run in parallel with the current API. So nothing will change for people that are using the current API. We're going to just release something new, and with time, things are going to be migrated to the new API. Can you pass the slide? Yes, and this is the this is a, an image we have that illustrates what the API is, the components that we have. So you can see in orange these three new components. They are uh, three components that will do parts of the API. So the recordings API is going to be here, the meetings API here, the presentations API here. We have a webhooks API as well that's not going to be changed. It's already working. And we have an, uh, a component on top of them that's an Nginx that's going to be like a broker to the internal components. So here you have we have the ideas of the microservices, delegated responsibilities, and trying to keep it simple, but at the same time improving the what we have today. And as the last one, uh, we have as, as one of the goals to make it easier for developers, we are also trying to document the API and use uh, using services like this one. You can see in the picture, it's called Swagger. It's a place where we can document the API and see all the API calls, how they, how they are called, how they respond. And it's something that several projects use and we are planning on using it so you can see a few ideas of the, the API calls we have today. This might change a little bit yet, but the general idea should be the same. So we're going to have also this documentation, this place where people can try out the new API and see how it works. So I think that's it. Yeah. Well, just to finish up, I, I, I wanted to add that, uh, well, anything is going gonna, is gonna to break. The idea is to keep, as uh, Leonardo was saying, keep um, Man, uh, well, supporting, at least for a time, the current uh, API. So this is kind of a new uh, application that is uh, uh, that is working in parallel with the with the current API. So you don't have to change. If you have an integration, you don't have to change it right away. You can adopt the new one but in, in, in the newest version. We're going to keep supporting the current one. Back to you, Fred. Thanks, Jesus and Leonardo. You guys have any questions for them about the new API, the work in progress? And we're definitely going to want your feedback on it. And as I said, the old one will still be supported long time, probably forever. But we will provide a new API that will encourage you guys to, to adopt, because that's where a lot of the work will go on in the future. OK, so I'm just going to take back the presentation control. So there's two new recording formats. Um, <laughs> Jesus put in 2.1. Uh, let's leave ourselves open in terms of what we may need in the next release. But you're going to see a lot of good work in the API. Um, so the two recording formats we actually put together, it's more, it's actually the recording 
uh, infrastructure Big Blue Button is very modular. It's one of the strengths that you can take the raw data that gets created from a recording and mix it into two different formats. So we actually created, uh, uh, two, we are creating two different formats, one we already have, one we'll have very shortly. So podcast and screen share. So a podcast is really just take the audio file from the Big Blue Button recording and make it available as an AUG file. So in the, if you're looking, if you're using Sakai or WordPress or any other integration that shows the multiple recording formats, uh, the, the users will see the presentation format. And if you enable the podcast format, we're just putting it together as a package, then it will be also available as another recording <laughs> format. So didn't take us a lot of work, but it was actually kind of a cool uh, example of how to create a new recording format and actually address one of the issues. One of the requests people have had from time to time is, can I just have an audio file for the recording? The other thing we're working on is the uh, video format, uh, which we call a uh, playback format called screen share. And I'll just get my webcam back. And so with the WebRTC screen sharing, you're going to get a really good uh, quality screen share. Uh, bar things like bandwidth or your CPU gets overloaded, there's always things that may affect it. But uh, there, we actually took, we actually thought, well, in the open source, we already have this presentation format. What if we, and, and we show that the screen share, we play the screen share back in one area, kind of draw it like this. Currently, the screen share gets played back here, and the webcams get played back at the lower right, and they're two separate uh, video files. So we thought, why don't we bring them together into one video file? So if you are doing a presentation and you are, you know, you're just doing screen sharing and sharing webcams, uh, we can give you a single video file. And that has the, uh, the screen share here at the main area and the webcams here, uh, the moderator webcams, um, actually all the webcams in the lower right-hand corner. Green light actually gives you the ability to upload to YouTube. Uh, once you have this playback format, you could simply right-click, download the video file, and then you could upload it or do whatever you want with it. Again, it's kind of just taking the same pieces that have already been there and turning it into a new, screen, a new uh, playback format. So we'll do that, and that'll be in the open source. I think that's all we needed to do for the slides. If I quickly go through uh, API, recording formats. Yeah. All right. So there will be another presentation, probably in half, half an hour, that'll talk about the HTML5 client. Definitely come out to that one. Lots of cool stuff the guys have been working on. Um, just to summarize, uh, we're finishing up 2.0. So you'll see another uh, package update go out early next week. Uh, it will still be called beta. There will be a few things we'll finish up. And then you'll see a release candidate come out. And then after that, we wait two weeks. If everything looks good, based on people's feedback in the community, uh, we call it the final release. And all we do is change the label. That's it. So we are looking forward to the final release of 2.0. As you can see in the forums, we've encouraged people to install it for the last couple of months, because it is actually pretty solid. But we do have very high standards, and we want to make sure when we call something a release, it is a release. Um, and in the meantime, we continue to improve it. The WebRTC desktop sharing is really a derivative of the work that's been going on in the HTML5 client. The new recording formats are basically the work that uh, taking advantage of what we already have. And the new API is work that we've wanted to do for a long time, and we started it. And we're looking forward to sharing it with you guys, and that will land in a future version. At this point, if there's any questions, feel free to ask or type in the chat. Um, we do these community calls now every two weeks, so you will get a chance to see an update two weeks from now. But yeah, any questions, just fire away. So the new recording format, could the created webcam video be based on audio input, so highlighted, enlarging the video of the person who speaks in the recording? All things are possible. So we, if you have five people in a session and they take turns speaking and we want to create a playback format that kind of looks like a Google Hangouts where the person who's talking is the one who's uh, shown larger and the other ones are shown below, it just, it is possible to do it. Um, there's more complexity involved. 
but this all happens post-processing. We'd have to build some more logic into the record and playback scripts so that they were aware of uh, either who was talking or maybe who was presenter if you're switching back and forth the presentation role, but it's possible. Um, and we may end up actually doing that in the future. We just wanted to do a couple of quick updates to the recording format now and, <laughs> and just finish 2.0. Um, but yeah, it is possible. And it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's something that others could do actually as well. Like they could take the, AT, the report, recording scripts and re, uh, remix it to do exactly what you want. Um, we're always looking out for people in the forum that are you know, trying to modify the product. And you can see we try to give help in terms of understanding how the code works. It, obviously, if somebody just posts and says, uh, how do I do X? It's hard for us to help them out because they haven't talked about what their skill level is, what they've tried to do, how far they got. It's easier to ask specific questions. But yeah, all over the, um, there's many ways to remix the recordings. So good feedback. Any other questions? Okay. Then I think we'll stop recording. Thanks for coming out.